here today in uh, Anne Jones's kitchen in Rothwell uh, to see how she prepares the well-known roll fair tart, or so it's a curd tart. Anne's going to uh, run through the ingredients for us and then she's going to prepare it and show us how this is done. Well, hello everyone. Um, I have lived in Rothwell for many years. I married a Rothwell man and um, his mother-in-law uh, uh, made these curd tarts every year for Roll Fair and it was a tradition in families that they came to grandmothers for curd tarts Roll Fair Sunday and uh, the, the Sunday tea after the blessing of the fair was ham salad and curd tarts and this has gone on for many years and I'm rather worried that this may be dying out as people don't seem to do so much cooking but now everybody has got lovely new kitchens I hope in the future they will make curd tarts. Uh, you don't need to be a genius to do it. A child of four won the competition which we hold every year a few years ago and um, these are the ingredients. We have curd or cottage cheese which is now you, you don't we used to have to hang it in a muslin bag this, uh, these curd tarts were made because years ago nobody had a fridge, so all the milk went sour. Well, not all of it, but some of it. And they hung it in a, a muslin bag to get the curd cheese. And nothing was wasted. The, the curd went to the pigs and the cheese was made into curd tarts. So, but today you don't have to have sour milk. It's a job to make it go sour now. So you can have cottage cheese which is um, here, you can have cottage cheese, you can even have cottage cheese with fruit in it. So um, you can use that instead of having to mess about with hanging it all the time. Or you can have this cream cheese, which you can buy at the supermarket. Um, the other ingredients are currants or mixed fruit. Now, um, we have here it is. Now this has to be soaked overnight or even in my case for about a week with uh, the booze of your choice. Now some people don't like to put alcohol in but for years I made it with lemon juice and my husband kept saying it's not like my granny's. Uh, you're not doing it right. It's not like my granny's. So I asked his aunt what did your mum put in the curd tarts? And she said, a drop of something out of the bottle. So it was either rum, whiskey or sherry. And you have a glass of this and you put it on the fruit uh, to soak for at least overnight. And it plumps the fruit up like it does when you do a fruit cake. So anyway, after I had had this tip from the old auntie, I did this and my husband said, oh, at last you've got it right. So anyway, we make the pastry and um, years ago nobody had um, weighing scales. The, these things were made by ordinary people. One, two, three, four. This spoon was my grandmother's and uh, it, it it measures out about an ounce. So I'm doing half the ingredients that I do for the competition. Um, the comp this on here will make four dozen tarts. We don't really want four dozen at the moment. So um, I put, I use half plain flour and half self-raising flour. This um, recipe here is just a loose idea on how to do this because everyone, every cook, has a different way of handling things. A little pinch of salt, but I'll use low salt because of the health reasons. And then we have the uh, butter, but I use margarine because I make quite a lot of tarts. And I take it straight from the fridge. It's always better straight from the fridge because it's cold. With making pastry, it's better to keep everything as cool as possible. 
else it just sticks to your hands. Now talking of hands, I've got arthritis, so I do this to so I don't have to keep squeezing the fat too much and I do it with this little grater which is really for my nutmeg but now I cheat and I buy already grated nutmeg for the filling so this is the lard going in and I use about half as much fat as flour that is my that's what I'm aiming to do Sometimes I have to bit, put a bit more flour in, but um, there we go. And when you're mixing it, hold, let it go lightly so that I've sieved the flour, as you see, to let the air in. We must let the air in as much as possible to make the pastry light and to keep it as cold as possible. So we do it like this until we make it into breadcrumbs. Not real breadcrumbs, it's just going to look like breadcrumbs. There we are. Here's the lard, here's the margarine. But you can use butter, and I know people that still do. And uh, this, every year at Royal Fair, which is Trinity Sunday, it is a church thing really, and uh, every year the children of Rothwell School one time had a week for Whitson holiday and two days for Rob Fair. And the shoe factories all had two days for Rob Fair as well. Rob Fair Monday and the Tuesday. Now they had the Monday for the proclamation of the fair and the Tuesday for everybody to get over it because they all had the rum and milk in the mornings. This was right down, the rum and milk was from the years when the, um, the cattlemen and, and uh, the drovers would come from miles around to the market which it was mainly, the fair was really a market for horses and cattle and sheep and they would be quite cold mornings because it was a movable feast. Um, Roll Fair never comes the same date every year because it's on the church calendar. So some years it would be very cold and um, a lot of people in the town would put up people what to stay who would come with the fair and they would have lodgers and they could also brew their own beer and, and that would be consumed in quite large quantities and everybody had a really good time. Now I've got a bit too much uh, fat in here so I have to put a bit more flour in. That's it. And then I add water which again I measure out in the spoon and, and I mix it up into the pastry. That's it, I... Okay, um, Hannah's prepared the pastry now and is just rolling that out and she's going to then make the, the actual tarts themselves. So back over to Anne. Well, uh, in the pastry, I put four tablespoons full of cold water to make the pastry with the ingredients that you saw me do. And now I put them into the pre-greased pots, in, into the pans. Now, I use the same pans that I use to make mince pies, because most people have them. Uh, you can do them in the deeper ones which you can do the muffins in. They are really the best to do it in because you get more of the content. But at the moment we will do these. Now I have a little story to tell about these pastry, um, these pans. 
uh, my husband's grandfather was a tinker and he worked for Tinker Smith in Rothwell and he made his daughter, my mother-in-law, her very own pans to put the curd tarts in and they were boat shaped and they were as deep as the pans that you have for, cook, for um, muffins and when she died uh, her sister-in-law took the pans she, we asked would she like anything and when I asked her what she'd done with them she got rid of them which I felt was very sad because they were personally made by a member of the family and um, we thought it was sad that they could not be handed down anyway we make do with the ones that we have and of course you do have them now the modern ones that um, were all bendy and cost quite a lot of money but I'm afraid my generation don't believe in buying things for the sake of it we hang on to the things that we've had for years this rolling pin was a wedding present and I've been I was married I had my golden wedding six years ago and uh, so you can see how people used to give a rolling pin to the bride like you've probably heard of horseshoes for luck but in those days you also had a rolling pin given you with a bit of ribbon on of course and um, in this manner we, um, we were meant to do cooking wives were meant to stay at home do the cooking and the cleaning look after the children but of course the wars all put a stop to that and now the wives all have to go to work. So if you don't have time to make the pastry, cheat. Buy your pastry. But do please make your curd tarts because I think it's most important that these traditions are meant to carry on. Now you'll see with these ingredients it's got measurements here, so many ounces of this, so many ounces of that. But mostly it's done by the spoon, which I can't find at the moment. Here it is. Uh, now at the moment, instead of using the butter, I am using um, healthy stuff. I try to make healthy ones because people are very health conscious these days. And uh, I shall use the cream cheese today. If you use the cottage cheese, it does have lumps in it, and you do have to um, put it through the sieve. So that would take a bit longer to show you what I was doing. But this is the cream cheese and uh, there is a well-known brand that you can get and mix this all up with your wooden spoon now I can't say this one has lasted me all my married life because it hasn't and uh, because we used to make homemade wine and the spoons got stained but there you go this is creaming up the cream and the butter now I've got it here on the method here and it says I get the right side soak the fruit overnight which I've done and if you use the lemon juice um, you use a lemon squeezer like this um, cream together the butter and the sugar and the lemon rind I have to keep looking at this because you only do it it's like Christmas you just do it at Christmas so Now see, some people will have the weighing scales and weigh it all out, but I'm doing it as I used to watch 
older people doing it. And when I was a district nurse, I would go around every year and say, what did you put in your herd tarts when you made them? And every year, everybody told me different. So every family had a different way of doing it. So now we have the eggs. And we beat the eggs up. So you don't need to have, and these are free range eggs from my daughter. mixing this in I'll talk about putting this is the fruit I'm not going to put all of this in but it um, it says in my recipe a glass of sherry and or whiskey or whatever but just think about how much juice you get in a lemon you don't get an awful lot and but it's up to each individual how much you want to put in you can put a glass like that if you wish there you go. So now I will do the lemon. Grate a little bit of the lemon. Just the rind of the lemon in this. Just to give it a bit of a flavour. in the fruit. This is all plumped up nicely. People who make cakes will do this quite uh, regularly because it plumps them up and it makes it really nice. And now we have, to just thicken up a bit, um, a few breadcrumbs which I grated beforehand. And years ago, to grate the breadcrumbs, that was given, you used up all your dry bread, you see. Years ago, you couldn't waste anything. And in these days of austerity now, it would be a good idea if people did the same. We, don't, we never threw bread away. It always was used for bread and butter puddings or even bread puddings, which was a bit like Christmas pudding. That was steamed. But... Um, We'll put the bread in here, give it a good stir, then we put it into the pans I'm just checking that I'll remember to think, which I haven't, I've got a little bit of nutmeg to go in, I've just remembered that. One year I was showing the grandchild how to do this and um, I forgot to put the sugar in and that I was doing tarts for the church and I thought wow now what am I going to do now I knew the minute they'd gone in the oven that the sugar wasn't in so when the tarts came out I tasted one it was lovely because it got the rum in it and so I put healthy option curd tarts sugar free they went like hot cakes so here we have now we put these in and I tend to use a soup spoon to do this because it holds more. Just I really must check to say that I've got everything in. Because I'm a bit lackadaisical. That's it. Yes. There we are. Now we put the mixture in each tart. And then when we've done this. We put them in the oven at around 200, 180 to 200 centigrade. I don't know what that is in gas, 
but I'm sure cookery books you will know. And then, um, you must remember, years ago, people like my mother were cooking on an old range. And if the wind was in the right direction, it was really hot. And in another direction, it went out. So they didn't have any, uh, you know, put it at this degree or that degree. There wasn't anything to tell you how hot the oven was. You just said a quick prayer when you put stuff in and hoped it would come out correctly. Right, now, that's my class. Now these will go into the oven, which I have set at 180. minutes it might take longer it may be but you look for them to be brown at the top and they're um, they rise a bit and um, Peter if you will fetch these that I did earlier this is what the finished product looks like and this is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven so when you have your family tea uh, on roll fair Sunday Try to make some curd tarts and try to keep tradition going because I think it's so important that children know a little bit about their family traditions. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks very much, Anne, for doing that. Because I think we've, uh, we've all learned some uh, interesting bits of local history and, and what people did in times past. So I'm very grateful, Anne, for, for doing this for us and we hope that many people will watch this on YouTube and, and give it a go themselves. See you sometime later. Just um, an additional uh, late piece of information, uh, in terms of the roll tarts, we have um, a competition which we run each, each year. Um, there is an entry form here which you can get at the Heritage Centre. The competition is judged on Saturday the 9th of June at 10.30am in the Heritage Centre. So you may like to give it a go. I'm just going to test one of these tarts now. Hmm, lovely. See you again soon.